opens a transparent trade in Europe, cutting the red tape. Europe needs reform. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to a snowy and icy Strasbourg here for the January session. January session has been dominated by talk of Brexit, as ever, as all the press, and I can certainly tell you that it's the buzz around Strasbourg. Um, interestingly, uh, we had a visit, a very short visit this week from David Liddington, the Europe Minister, um, and really not coming to see we British Conservatives, but having been invited by the German CDU, so that's Angela Merkel's party, to come and talk to their MEPs who have now come out very strongly uh, and they're supporting the UK staying in the EU um, and very vigorously so uh, governments are obviously talking with them. I'm delighted that they're supporting the UK in this way. It's interesting to see though they need to put their money where their mouth is and support our Prime Minister on his demands and we're told that we're on track for that to come through in the, the February Council I'm hoping that that will be the end to the negotiations and we can get on with the, with the referendum because I know, certainly from all of the correspondence I'm having from constituents, that everybody wants to see this uh, resolved one way or the other, whatever, way, whatever side of the argument you're on, so that we can get on with life post-referendum. Here in Strasbourg, for me personally, it's been a really interesting week because you'll all recall that way back, uh, 2012, 2013, I was working very hard on the reform of the Common Agricultural Policy. Common Agricultural Policy is 40% of the EU's budget. It's an extremely important um, part of what the EU does, both in terms of supporting farmers um, through the vagaries of the market, but also, most importantly, um, securing food supplies at decent prices for European citizens. And one of the things that we were most concerned about was the new rules around greening. That means making farmers responsible for the environmental health and well-being of the land. Now, I'm all for that. I think that's a, a good exchange for public money, is that farmers look after uh, the land. And every farmer I meet agrees with that. It's really how you do it and it's the proportionate or disproportionate way in which um, penalties are levied if mistakes or genuine errors are made. And just to give you a small example, if you, if you miscalculate uh, the position, say, of a couple of trees on your land when you put in your application, you could be deemed as being in breach of the rules and you could have your application severely diminished. You could have the amount of money you are paid cut by up to a half. Now, we've always argued that that's disproportionate. Of course, if farmers were serial offenders on this, then the penalties should go up. But to make one very small mistake or one small error on your record keeping and then to, be, to have your entire payment withdrawn is completely wrong. And I'm very happy to say that the, the Commissioner, Commissioner Hogan, this week has told Members of Parliament that he, has now, he is now bringing in a new system, which is one that we suggested during cap reform but didn't make the cut, but he has now put that back on the table and is going to push it through, something known as the yellow card system. So that means farmers would get a warning they would not get the disproportionate fine on a first offence. Sounds like a really small thing, but I think it's these sorts of things that it's really important for us to keep pushing for here in the Parliament to get through so that farmers can be confident that they're not being treated unfairly. We've also had long discussions here with the Dutch presidency because, as you know, we have a rotating presidency. A January sees the beginning of a six-month presidency for the Dutch. The Dutch, probably of most of the uh, 28 member states, are the ones most like we Brits. So we have a lot in common with them. We have a lot of affinity with them culturally, politically. Uh, so I look forward very much to their presidency. I will be leading the parliament through air quality legislation under their presidency. And I look forward to being able to work with them in the pragmatic and sensible way that they're famous for. So I'm going to sign off now. Uh, back into the chamber to talk about uh, the situation in Poland and I would uh, very much look forward to speaking to you in February.